Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look more at geometric sequences. Hopefully by now you've already seen the video that explains when a sequence is a geometric sequence, but basically it's when there's a common ratio, a common thing being multiplied to get from one term to the next. So the formula to find any term in a geometric sequence is given by the following. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So n minus 1, this is the exponent of r. So we just want to make, the, ooh, gross. We just make this very clear that this is an exponent. And then just so we know what these variables are, a sub 1, that's the first term in the sequence. a sub n is the nth term in the sequence. r is the common ratio. And n is the number in the sequence that we're looking for. So for example, if we have the sequence 5, 15, 45, 135, so on and so forth, and now it's asking us to identify the tenth term in the sequence. You can just figure out what that common ratio is and just keep multiplying until you count to 10. But generally we like to do the formula first. And that way, if it said also, you know, find the 15th, you wouldn't have to keep doing that. And also you could hit the equal sign one too many times or one too few times and be off. So we'll play it safe and we'll practice. So if you don't know the formula yet, let's write it down. A sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And let's label what we know. We are looking for the 10th term. So what we're looking for is a sub 10. So we're going to say a sub 10 equals question mark. a sub 1, that's the first term. The first term in the sequence is 5. The common ratio, so how would I get from 5 to 15? Well, I would multiply by 3. Just to verify, 15 to 45, I would multiply by 3. 45 to 135, I would multiply by 3. So the common ratio is 3. And we're looking for the tenth term, so we're going to say n equals 10. Okay, so we're going to say a sub 10 is equal to 5 times 3 to the 10 minus 1. We do need to follow order of operations here, so be careful. If you just plug this in your calculator, you need to make sure that 10 minus 1 is up in the, the whole expression is in the exponent, or it's a pretty simple subtraction problem. You can just do that subtraction ahead of time and just say that it's 3 to the 9th. So when we do this, 5 times 3 to the 9th, that's going to tell us the 10th term, and we end up with 98,415. In our next example, we want to know the 8th term in the sequence. Uh, we have 1 9th, 2 thirds, 4, 24. And again, we're going to use the formula, so we're going to say a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And we'll label what we know. We're looking for the eighth term. So a sub 8 is our unknown. a sub 1 is 1 over 9. Our common ratio, so this one can be a little bit tricky because you might see two fractions and be like, oh no. But remember, this is a common ratio. So it's the same thing each time. So I would start with the ones that I can clearly figure out pretty quickly, which is 4 to 24. What would I multiply 4 by to give me 24? I would need to multiply by 6. And then you can double check this. Well, is 6 times, sorry, is 6 times 1 ninth really equal to 2 thirds? Well, that would be 6 over 9, which is 2 thirds. Is 2 thirds times 6 equal to 4? Yeah, because that's 12 thirds, which does equal 4. So our common ratio is 6, and we already said that n is 8. So we're going to plug this in. We're going to say a sub 8, the 8th term in the sequence, will be found by taking 1 ninth and multiplying it by 6 to the 8 minus 1. And again, make sure you do 8 minus 1 ahead of time. Don't put 8 minus 1 in the calculator because it might end up giving you the wrong exponent. It might raise... 6 to the 8th power, and then just take away 1 from that answer, which is not the same thing as 6 to the 8 minus 1. It is the same thing as 6 to the 7th, and either way, when we do 1 9th times 6 to the 7th, I end up with 31,104. So we can say that the 8th term will be 31,104. You'll notice with the geometric sequences, um, the numbers get big really, really quickly, and if the r value was a fraction, they would get small really, really quickly. That's just what happens with our geometric sequences. Okay, so this time we're given 3, 6, 12, 24, so on and so forth. We're going to write the formula for the nth term, and then we're going to use that formula to find the 21st term in the sequence. Now is a good time to pause and make sure you can write the formula and figure out the 21st term. Did you pause and try it? All right, let's see how you did. So our formula, we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 
times r to the n minus 1. While we are writing the formula, we're going to leave a sub n as a sub n, and we're going to leave n as n, but we're going to fill in for a sub 1 and for r. So for part a, we're going to say a sub 1, the first term in the sequence is 3, and our common ratio to get from 3 to 6, I would double it, multiply by 2 that is, 6 to 12, multiply by 2, 12 to 24, multiply by 2, so our common ratio is 2. Now our formula will be given by a sub n is equal to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. And sometimes I put parentheses, the parentheses in the exponent, sometimes I don't. It really doesn't matter, it's just for added emphasis when I do put it in. And then letter b is asking us to find the 21st term. So this time we're going to say n is equal to 21. That would be a sub 21 is equal to 3 times 2 to the 21 minus 1. Again, be careful with those order of operations. This would be 3 times 2 to the 20th. And when we plug that into our calculators, we get 3,145,728. Before I go over this example, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can figure out the formula and the 11th term on your own. Okay, so for this example, first I'm going to write down that formula. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And for part a, we only need to fill in a sub 1 and r. a sub 1 is negative 3 eighths. And r, again, since we do have some fractions, I might go to these two integers over here. We have negative 6 to 24. I would need to multiply by negative 4. So I multiply by negative 4, and then we want to just double check that we also need to multiply by negative 4 to get from negative 3 eighths um, to 3 halves. That would be negative times negative is positive 12 eighths, which is 3 halves. Positive, great. And from positive 3 halves to negative 6, if I multiply 3 halves by negative 4, that's negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6. So our r value is negative. You'll notice that when the r value is negative, that common ratio is negative, that the sign alternates. So it goes from positive to negative to positive to negative. Okay, now we're going to fill these two pieces of information in, and our formula is going to be a sub n is equal to negative 3 eighths times negative 4 to the n minus 1. We do want to make sure that the negative 4 is inside parentheses, whether you put a dot there or not, um, because it should be negative 4 being raised to that power of n minus 1. Um, if you put, if you write it like this, negative 4 to the n minus 1, technically order of operations says that you would need to do the exponent first and then attach the negative afterwards, which isn't going to work out because that's always going to give you a negative and that is wrong. So you need to make sure that negative 4 is inside parentheses when you write this formula. So this would be the complete correct formula for part A. Now for part A, uh, for part B, we're looking for the 11th term. So n is equal to 11. That would be a sub 11 is equal to negative 3 eighths times negative 4 to the 11 minus 1. Again, I encourage you to do 11 minus 1 in your head. 11 minus 1 is 10. And plug this in as negative 3 eighths times negative 4 to the 10th. I, I'm realizing now that I skipped over, if you're not sure how to put a fraction into your calculator, uh, negative 3 eighths in your calculator would be negative 3 divided by 8. So in your calculator, you would type negative 3 divided by 8 times negative 4 to the power of 10. That's how I would put it in the calculator. And when you do that, you should end up with negative 393,000. 216. That would be the 11th term in this gorgeous geometric sequence. Okay, two more examples. Given the 12th term of a geometric sequence is 7 and the common ratio is a half, write a formula for the nth term. So this time we're given some slightly different information. As usual, I will encourage you to pause, try this on your own, see if you can come up with the formula, and then check your work. Okay, so we're going to write the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. This time we know the 12th term, so n is equal to 12. We know a sub 12, the value of that 12th term is 7. And we know the common ratio is a half. 
If we're going to write the formula, we need to know what a sub 1 is, and we don't currently have that, but I think we have enough information that we can figure it out based on this right here. So let's plug in what we know. We know a sub n is a sub 12, which is 7, is equal to our unknown, times our common ratio, 1 half, and this is 1 half to the 12 minus 1. So this would be 7 is equal to a sub 1 times 1 half to the 11th power. And if we do 1 half to the 11th power, we're probably going to end up with a pre 80 itty bitty number. We end up with 7 equals a sub 1 times 1 over 2048. To clear out this fraction, since it's being multiplied, the inverse operation would be to actually multiply by its reciprocal, which would be 2048 over 1, or just 2048. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2048. We're going to figure out that the first term is 14,336. We're not done yet. It did ask us to write the formula. That's, this was just a sub 1. So now we have the two pieces we need. We have a sub 1. We know our common ratio. We're ready to write the formula. a sub n is equal to 14,336 times 1 half to the n minus 1. And this would be our formula for this example. In our last example here, we want to read this really carefully. Given the 20th term, 20th careful with that because sometimes we read it and we see 12th somehow so you just want to be really careful with these when the numbers are written out like that. So we have the 20th term, the value of that term, and the common ratio. We want to write the formula. Again, I encourage you to pause. Try it on your own first. Okay, how would you do? I guess we'll find out. All right, we're going to write the formula down. We're going to plug in what we know. We know a sub 20 is equal to 131,072. a sub 1 we don't know. We know the common ratio is 2. And we know that in this example, this specific example, that n is 20. So now we're going to plug in what we know. 131,072 is equal to a sub 1, our unknown, times 2 to the 20 minus 1. 20 minus 1 is 19, and 2 to the 19th is probably some very huge number. Oh, goodness. 524,288. I did just do a little fast one on you and use the commutative property to flip this around. Now we have just a normal number being multiplied by a sub 1. To undo that normal number, we will divide by that normal number. So I'm going to divide both sides by 524,288. Those cancel, and we end up with a sub 1 is equal to 131,072 divided by 524,288 is 1 fourth. So we know that our first term was 1 quarter. We're going to use this information. We have the a sub 1 and we have the r. We can write the formula as a sub n. And notice when we write the formula, we go back to a sub n. We don't put a sub 20 because if we're finding any term, whether it's the 20th, the 18th, the 80th, whichever. A sub uh, n is equal to 1 fourth times 2 to the n minus 1.